Hey everyone, welcome to the fifth lesson in the Crow Panel ESP32 HMI Display Series Tutorials. In this class, I'll guide you through how to display an LVGL demo on the Crow Panel ESP32 display. Before we get started, I'm sure some of you are wondering, what's the LVGL library all about? Great question. LVGL is a graphics library that allows us to easily design beautiful interfaces using its provided functions. But you might also be asking, why do we need LVGL if we already have Lovey and GFX or TFTF TASPI installed? Well, the Lovian GFX and TFTFP ESPI libraries primarily provide display and touch driver functions for our boards. While they can be used to design interfaces, it's quite challenging for beginners as it involves writing a lot of code. With LVGL, you can create buttons, labels, sliders, graphs, and more with just a few functions. Therefore, more and more people are beginning to learn and use the LVGL library. Due to the different display driver libraries used by the screens, this video will be divided into two parts. In the first part, I'll demonstrate using a 5-inch board, but all the operations will also be applicable to 4.3-inch and 7-inch boards. In the second part, I'll demonstrate using a 2.4-inch board, and all the operations will work for 2.8-inch and 3.5-inch boards as well. You can choose which part to watch based on the board you're using. Now, I'll start with the demonstration using the 5-inch board. Open the course files, locate the code folder for the fifth lesson, and open the corresponding code based on your board size. After opening the code, you'll see comments related to LVGL reminding you that when you want to use LVGL's demos, you need to include the LV demos. H and LV examples. Hey, Tedder files. Since the main focus of this lesson is to utilize LVGL's demos, you don't need to make any changes to this part. Moving on to the configuration of the display and touch-related driver code based on the comments, you'll need to open the gfsinit header file. There will also be comments guiding you on how to configure it. Depending on the size of your board, select the appropriate macro to use. The compiler will compile the display and touch driver code for the corresponding size based on the macro you use. Assuming you're using a 4.3 inch board, you'll need to uncomment the macro for 4.3 inches and comment out the others. But for this lesson, I'm using a 5 inch board, so I'll only keep the macro for 5 inches uncommented. Alright, we've finished configuring the display and touch drivers. Now it's time to install and configure the LVGL library. There are quite a few steps in this process, so please don't miss any of them. Click on Sketch, then Find Include Library. Open the Library Manager and search for LVGL. Here, let's select version 8.3, 11 to keep it consistent with mine. Why? Because later in the course, we'll be using a software called Squareline Studio, and the current latest version of this software only supports 8.3, 11. Where can you find this information? You can go to the Squareline Studio website, click here to go to the download page, and locate the release note. Here, it will tell you about each version's updates and the compatible LVGL version. Okay, now you know why we're selecting this version, right? Go back to the Arduino IDE and click to install the LVGL library. While it's installing, I'll tell you about Squareline Studio and why we need it. Don't worry about the previous steps right now, just ignore that part. So, Squareline Studio is a graphical UI design software. In this program, you can drag and drop controls from the widget panel in the lower left corner to the center of the screen, which helps you quickly design interfaces. Plus, it has a simulation feature, which is pretty cool, right? No rush, I'll teach you how to use it in the next class. The LVGL library is already installed, but we need to configure some important settings. Click on File, Open Preferences, and copy the path under Sketchbook Location. This path will take you directly to the library directory. In the library directory, find the LVGL library and locate the file named lvconf template h. Copy this file into the library directory and rename it to lvconf h. This is the configuration file for the LVGL library, which it uses to compile the necessary code during each compilation. Next, 
open it with an editing tool and start configuring the settings. First, change this to one according to the comments to enable the content in this file. Once you've done that, scroll down and find LEMIM Custom. This is related to LVGL's memory management settings, which require you to estimate and set the size of the memory pool. However, it's quite cumbersome to use, so you can change this to 1 to use the standard library's memory management functions. It will automatically allocate space for you, so you don't have to worry about errors caused by a too small memory pool. Continuing to scroll down, find LV Tick Custom and change it to 1 to use the Arduino library's tick function. After making this modification, you're only left with one more step. Open the search function and search for demo. When you find demo usage, you'll see a macro called LViews Demo Widgets. This macro represents the LVGL demo named Widgets, which is used in the example code for this class. Therefore, in the configuration file, you need to set this macro to 1. Absolutely. In addition to Widgets, there are other LVGL demos like Benchmark, Stress, and Music. In general, the way to use them is to set the macro for the desired demo to 1 and modify the example code to call the corresponding functions. All right, click Save and then close this file. The LVGL configuration file is now modified. However, there's a crucial step remaining to successfully compile this example code. Open the LVGL library folder and copy the demos and examples folders into the SRC folder. Otherwise, the compiler won't be able to find these folders and their contents during compilation. Now, I've completed all the installation and configuration and we're ready to compile the code. But if you're curious about how LVGL and Luvian GFX are connected, pay attention to the next part of my explanation. It might be helpful for you. If not, you can skip this section. First, these two middle lines represent variables used as data buffers. LVGL recommends setting them to about one-tenth of the screen size, as larger values won't have a significant impact. Next, this is LVGL's display driver, which actually utilizes the Luvian GFX library's pixel drawing function. This allows LVGL to leverage that pixel drawing function to render any widget at any location. Next, we have the LVGL touch driver, which leverages the touch driver function from the Luvian GFX library. It passes the captured touch information as parameters to the LVGL touch driver function. At this point, you should understand why you need to use another graphics library when working with the LVGL library and how the LVGL library interfaces with the display driver and touch driver. Let's examine what the setup function does. First, it initializes the serial port, followed by the initialization of the I.O. ports. Next comes the display initialization, and immediately after that, the initialization of LVGL including the display driver and touch driver. Finally, it loads the LVGL widgets demo. Lastly, in the loop function, there is a timer handler function that runs continuously. This function is responsible for periodically executing LVGL tasks with a current interval of 5 MPs, which is the recommended value. If the timer handler function is not executed for a prolonged period, the program will crash and the screen will freeze. All right, the analysis of the example code is now complete. Next, you'll need to configure the compilation settings and upload the code. Click on Tool and select the corresponding board touch chip from the list. If you're unsure how to configure the compilation settings based on your board, please refer to the content from the first lesson as the compilation process can take quite a while. Incorrect configurations can waste a lot of your time, so it's crucial to ensure that the settings are correct. Once you've configured everything, click on Upload. Since the upload process can also be lengthy, I'll speed up this part of the video. Once the code upload is complete, you'll see this interface on your screen. This demo features various widgets that you can interact with. All right, that's it for the demonstration of the 4.3-inch, 5-inch, and 7-inch boards. Next, 
I'll demonstrate the steps for the 2.4 inch, 2.8 inch, and 3.5 inch boards. Locate the example code for the fifth lesson and open the one that is compatible with 2.4 inch, 2.8 inch, and 3.5 inch displays. Before compiling and uploading this example code, there are three steps you need to take. First, configure the TFTESPI library. Second, install and configure the LVGL library. Third, modify the example code. All right, let's start with the first step. Since I already demonstrated in detail in the second lesson how to configure the TFTESPI library based on the board's hardware, I won't go into it again here. In the course files, find the pre-configured user setup file based on your board size and copy it into the TFTESPI library. If you're not sure about the library's path, you can click on File, then Open Preferences. The sketchbook location path can help you locate the library directory. Next, open the library directory, locate the TFTESPI library and replace the existing user setup file with the one you copied. After replacing, the first step is complete. Moving on to the second step, installing and configuring the LVGL library. In the example code, you can see that it includes some LVGL header files along with some comments. Since the main focus of this lesson is to display the LVGL demo on the screen, we don't need to make any changes to these header files. However, we need to install and configure the LVGL library first so that these header files can be found. Click on Sketch, then include Library, and open the Library Manager. Next, search for LVGL. Here, let's select version 8.3, 11 to keep it consistent with mine. Why? Because later in the course, We'll be using a software called Squareline Studio, and the current latest version of the software only supports 8.311. Where can you find this information? You can go to the Squareline Studio website. Click here to go to the download page and locate the release note. Here, it will tell you about each version's updates and the compatible LVGL versions. You may be wondering, what is Squareline Studio and why should we learn to use it? For now, you can ignore the part about creating a project in Squareline Studio. I'll explain that in detail in the next lesson. However, within this software, you can drag and drop necessary components onto your interface and arrange them freely. It's such a simple and quick UI design tool that I can't think of any reason not to use it. All right, let's head back to the Arduino IDA. Select version 8.3, 11, and install it. After installation, you'll also need to configure the LVGL library. To do that, find the LVGL library folder, locate the LVConf template, file within it, copy it to the library directory, and rename it to LVConf H. This is the configuration file for the LVGL library, and it's used by the library to compile the necessary code during each compilation. Next, open it with an editing tool and start configuring the settings. First, change this to 1 according to the comments to enable the content in this file. Once you've done that, scroll down and find LVMem Custom. This is related to LVGL's memory management settings, which require you to estimate and set the size of the memory pool. However, it's quite cumbersome to use so you can change this to 1 to use the standard library's memory management functions. It will automatically allocate space for you, so you don't have to worry about errors caused by a too small memory pool. Continuing to scroll down, find LV Tick Custom and change it to 1 to use the Arduino library's tick function. After making this modification, you're only left with one more step. Open the search function and search for demo. When you find demo usage, you'll see a macro called LVUs Demo Widgets. This macro represents the LVGL demo named Widgets, which is used in the example code for this class. Therefore, in the configuration file, you need to set this macro to 1. Absolutely, in addition to Widgets, there are other LVGL demos like Benchmark, Stress, and Music. In general, the way to use them is to set the macro for the desired demo to 1 and modify the example code to call the corresponding functions. Alright, click Save and then close this file. 
The LVGL configuration file is now modified. However, there's a crucial step remaining to successfully compile this example code. Open the LVGL library folder and copy the demos and examples folders into the SARC folder. Otherwise, the compiler won't be able to find these folders and their contents during compilation. The process of configuring LVGL might seem a bit lengthy, but the good news is that the second step is now complete. Moving on to the third step, modifying the example code. Based on the comments, you'll need to determine which macro to use based on the board you're using. Using different macros will compile and utilize different initialization data for resolution and touch functionality. Assuming you're using a 3.5-inch board, you would need to comment out all the macros except for the one for the 3.5-inch board. When compiling, the compiler will only compile the code specific to the 3.5-inch display. However, for this lesson, I'm using a 2.4-inch board, so I'll only need to keep the macro for the 2.4-inch display uncommented. Alright, the three steps are now complete. But if you're curious about how the TFTSB library and the LVGL library are actually connected, please don't skip this part. This is the display driver for LVGL, but if you pay close attention, you'll notice that it essentially calls functions from the TFTSB library to draw a pixel, and here's the touch driver for LVGL. Similarly, you'll see that it utilizes functions provided by the TFTSB library to detect touch events and retrieve their parameters. Next, in the setup function, we initialize various functionalities, the serial port, IO ports, display and touch drivers, and then LVGL including its display and touch callback functions. Finally, we load the LVGL demo. After the setup function has been executed, the loop function begins to run. Inside this function, you need to continuously execute the LVTimerHandler function, which handles LVGL's tasks. It's crucial to execute this function regularly and not for too long. According to the LVGL documentation, it's recommended to run it every 5 M's. If it's not executed for a long time, the LVGL program will crash and the display will freeze. All right. After understanding the entire example code, let's see if this LVGL demo runs properly on the board by uploading it. Click on Tools and configure the compilation information. If you're not sure how to configure the compilation based on your board's hardware, I recommend you go back and watch the first lesson, as the compilation process can take quite a while and incorrect configuration will steal a lot of your time. Finally, click Upload. Since the uploading process takes a while, I'll speed up this part of the video. Once the upload is complete, you'll see a screen like this. It looks very smooth, with no lags, and you can see the effects of various components on the screen. Alright, that's all for this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you in the next lesson.